Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee and Crafts with John. This morning, I've got uh, Joe from Craftsmaster Journey going to join me here in a few minutes. But as always, we're going to go ahead and run the Kawaii Crap Shooters four roll challenge. And I, of course, have it says, says day eight, but I got I to gotta change that. I'll, I'll, I'll take that day number off because I've lost count completely. So um, here we go. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and do a version today of the iron cross. I'll do it my uh, my, my crossbow-ish kind of strategy. So what I'm going to do is take my 350, and we'll have to do a pass line bet. We know we have to do that. I'm going to go ahead and do $60 on the 6 and 8, and $50 on the 5. Let me get some, some nickels out of here. We'll go 60 and 60. We'll go 50 down here. And we'll go, I guess I need more, don't I? Um, no, I'll go a quarter in the field. And with this 30 bucks that I have left, I'll put that on the C and the E. And what we'll do is we'll grab, let's see, I think I'll do, I have enough for four rolls, right? So I'll take six bucks out of here. I'll get, I'll get that. We'll get uh, four and five. And I'll do a $6 C and E split. So we $2 on the, on the E and four on the C. Um, maybe I'll do that at 12. Let's do it at 12. We'll go 12 bucks, we'll do it a couple of times. And so that'll be actually, it'll be four on the, on the, um, four on the 11 and eight on the, on the craps. And that's it, we're just gonna roll four times, see what happens. I'm gonna have these off, these off and the field off while I'm coming out. They're just out there so you can see what's gonna bet. Here we go, I'll do my regular set. And we'll see how we do here. Um, actually, I may do the three, two, one, three again. I had good success with that last week. We'll see. Who knows? First day, first first shots here in a couple days in the, on the on the home table. So let's go. Dice are out, and we have a six, one, seven on the come out, which is fantastic. Twenty-five dollar one on the pass line. I'm going to rack that for now. I will stack that somewhere else in a minute. Here we go. All right, dice are up. Dice are out. There's another 617. Boy, oh boy, this is uh, shaping up to be a hot morning. That was a 617, not a, not a, not a 4 one. I rolled it when I brought him over. That's another 50, which is great. We're in our 25. Now I've got extra cash to play with over here to be a little bit more aggressive with, which is fun. We'll put that on the, on the craps. Maybe we'll put down the craps numbers on the way out here once we get our, our number established. All right, here we go. Nice are up, and they're out. All right, we're on the 10, a 6, 4, 10, 10 on the end. Now, let's get ourselves set up. So our field's gonna be hot, quarter in the field, I hope you can see that. We got 60, 60, and 50 with the 6, 8, and 5. Over here, again, I've only got four rolls to play, so if I can get these rolls working, this is gonna be okay. Now again, this is gonna be eight and four. I just got $12 sitting here, so you know what the, what the spread's gonna be. Here we go. Roll number one is coming. Dice are up. Here's a five, three, eight. So we're gonna lose 12. We're gonna lose a quarter. Typical iron cross, right? You're gonna bleed everything you got. We're gonna grab 60, 70 bucks though, which is kind of nice. We'll put 25 back in the field. And we're gonna go ahead over here and we're gonna put uh, another 12 bucks over here. We'll see if, if we need to, we can increase that later. But for now, that'll be it. That's roll number one in the books. We got some echo on the feed. Joe, you have your headphones on? No, I don't. They're not working at all. So. Huh. I'm getting reports from the field out there that there's echo today. Yeah, I saw that. Let me turn my volume off once until you come back. All right. All right. Our second roll here is going to be a nine, a six, and a three. It's a nine. So we'll lose again over here on the horns. That's roll number two. That's going to be a field winner. And we're going to go ahead and stack it and add to it. Roll two in the books. Here comes roll three. Dice are stacked 
and they're out. That was a terrible throw, my God. Five, two, seven. Okay, so we burn it again. So here it is. I, that's like four, three sevens out of like five rolls. Um, so we lose all of it. I think I lost it all Friday. I think Friday was a horrible day where I lost everything as well. So we'll take all this, all this mess down and we're gonna walk away here. Let's get this all set up with just the money we won on the come out sevens, which is nothing to, 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 to sing a song about, but it is what it is. Happy Monday, everybody. Um, I thought I would start off today with a little bit of a trip report. Um, I went to the casino last night on the way back from a show. And actually, this weekend was kind of fun. We did two shows. We went to uh, Sebastian Maniscalco. If you know who that is, he's a comedian. He's freaking hysterical. Uh, my wife and daughter and I went down to see him on Saturday. That was hella fun. Um, and I didn't, I didn't play. I was going to play craps this week. I was going to go to see my son and play a couple times on the way down to, to see, because he's in Oregon. I was going to play at a casino in Southern Washington, see him to play, and then play on the way home. But his work schedule got switched, so I couldn't do that. Um, I'm going to go down there and see him next weekend instead. But last night I went to a show in Seattle. On the way home, I played a little bit, and I ground forever. It seemed like forever, probably about an hour and a half, but I was trying this. I was trying the, uh, I'll set them up for you. I was trying the inside press, which you all know. And we, we've, you've seen me play this a bunch of times. Vince has played this a bunch of times. It's just 66 inside and you're pressing up three times, right? You're going to go every time it hits, you're going to win 21. The first time you're going to add a buck to it and you're going to press up to 88. You're going to press up to 110. You're going to press up one more time, and then you're going to pull it down. I could never get the third hit. I, had, I get the third hit like once, but it, it just wasn't working. I was up and down and up and down. It was like, you know, win 85, lose 110. Win 85, lose, and I just couldn't get it to go, and I got kind of mad. And I'm like, I'm just going to get out of here. So, and it was only me. There was like me and like two other guys there. So I got to, I got to, to throw a lot. Um, but I was throwing a lot of sixes and eights when I was, when I was throwing. So I went... With this, I went with 60 on the six and eight, like so. And when I, my last turn with the dice, I actually caught it. And I, I did this, I got 60 and I, and I won 70, right? And I pressed them both to 90. I went just like this, up to 90, took the nickel, that won 105, so there's 105, and um, I went to 150 with it. So I took them both up to 150. I had to take my nickel from there and I went to 150 on both, like so, right? When that hit the third time and it did hit the third time, it was 175. Oh, and by the way, I was on the don't for a quarter. And what I did is I pulled it down. I pulled all this, all this down back to the rack and I went $100 in odds on my point. I think it was actually a four, like this. And then I sevened out. And I ended up getting paid down here, 25 and 50. And so I walked out of there with a couple hundred bucks in profit. I was down about 100 when I started this process. And so that little gambit right there earned me about 320 or so, which ain't bad. If you look at like the, there's the 60. That's about the, the 50 the 60 on each and the quarter that I started with. And I walked out of there with one, two, 300, 425, but I was down, like I said, down a little bit. Um, and it worked out. Um, one of those things where I kind of ran my inner Vince, I got, I, I went on tilt. I was like, you know, I'm not just gonna sit here and grind all damn night. I'm just gonna go, boom. Um, and got angry, went in and kind of made it work, so. Um, it was cool. And I, 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 it's two weekends in a row that I basically made the same move where um, things weren't working out so perfectly and I ended up going just a little heavier and just on the six and the eight and it worked out for me. So I, I don't know. Um, caught the rhythm the way that it goes. So here we go. Let's get Betsky get here and let's talk about what's happening in the craps world. I didn't put a couple of notes on here, but I should. Um, first of all, Friday night was a, whew, what a night Friday night was. Um, the Friday night fight was great. I'm taking my glasses off here. It was great. Um, Chris and Carl played an epic match. It was they were up and down the whole time. Carl at one point was down to like 15 bucks in his rack and like hundred dollars in the field, or on the on the felt rather. Battled all the way back and almost took Chris in that first in that first round. Um, second round they both went down to zero. The third round though they were 
They, they crushed it. They both did so good. Um, Sideshow Gamble, though, is our new King of the Mountain. So the first week, King of the Mountain switches. Um, Sideshow went to 2282 to 1570 was the score. Matter of fact, let me show you the, um, let me see, I want to go to the screen here. Which one is it? This one? There he goes. There's the current standings. Um, Sideshow wins it. Next up is going to be E-Hydra. We got a, quite a crew waiting in line to play. So you got Badger, Rich, allegedly Dave, Dice Jedi's going to play, Big AZ's going to play, and Buckeye's going to play. We need more people. And like I said, we're going to start doing this a couple times a week, I think. There's enough people now that we can probably do it Wednesday and Friday, or maybe two on Friday. We'll see. But um, yeah, after Friday, um, what happened was... Um, Jeff ran. So the skill and luck. Yeah, I know. I saw it, Vince. I've seen the echo. As soon as Joe comes online, we get this bad echo. I think Joe's got something going on um, with his with his uh, with his speakers. I'm not sure what it is. Um, anyway, um, after the after that, Jeff went on, and I'm telling you what, I played skill and luck for an hour or so because skill was supposed to play Ken and Ken couldn't make whatever happened. I came in and played skill. And um, we did. We had a fun match. He beat me. He beat my ass pretty good. Um, I stayed in too long. I was doing. A, I was doing that inside press actually. And I pressed, pressed, pressed. I got up to like nine ninety, and I probably should have pulled back down to one ten and restarted it. But I left it out there, and Jeff got me on the seven. I never, never came back from that. Um, and then Jeff dealt again. Uh, Joe and Vince came on, and uh, Chris. I forget who else was there. It was Chris, Joe? Oh, oh, Skill, Vince, Joe, and me. And um, that was like four or five hours of straight YouTubing. I don't know how Jeff stayed awake. I don't know. Vince brought all kind of energy from not only in the chat. And by the way, you've said something here in chat that I want to put up on screen, Vince, because I think it's important to hear this. Let me get to where your comment was. Um, he says, Mac, in my many chat, many channels, and I do uh, get fired up. You were funny, man. I'm, the other <laughs> Friday night, you were talking all kind of smack. And it was fun. I had a good time. I don't, I don't get, I don't take what you say personally. I know you're just joking, trying to fire things up. I thought it was cool. Um, we all four got on and I went dark really quick and it went right to zero and just kind of sat back and drank and watched you guys play. It was fun. Mac, good job on that. And then of course, last night, Mac went again with a challenge uh, with four people to, um, to win a hundred bucks out of his YouTube earnings. And, um, Chris from Dice DGen won that. I think Chris said he was going to donate that money to the Crapsathon once we have it. So that's good. That's really good to see um, that that happened. That was that was the idea anyway. So that's cool. Our first donation, I guess, for the Crapsathon is there. So there's that. Um, we had our first deal me in last week, Dice Jedi. Uh, Anthony's going to be back again this week. Cannot wait to see where that show goes. I think that's about it. So with that said, I'm going to bring Joe in right now and. Um, Let's get let's get talking here. So, Joe, I'm going to turn your, uh, your 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 microphone should be back on again. Hopefully, there's not a lot of echo. Now, make sure you got YouTube turned off if you have it on. Um, but yeah, when That's not let's on. see, um, you're talking. I, I ever hear the echo. The same as always. Let's see if anybody else hears echo now that you're talking. How how you doing, man? Good, good, good. Hey, I just want to give a plug out to Chiro. Uh, I saw his video this morning. Um, he had a trip report as well. And hey, trip reports are awesome, guys. I love seeing those things. Um, he kind of got beat up a little bit, he said. Um, but the cool thing about his video is he talks about how they open it, the crafts table. Um, so if anybody's never seen it, you know, get to a crafts table early. It's really, really interesting to see the table being open. Um, but, you know, props to Chiro because, you know, <laughs> losing at the table and reporting that out is a, is a mm -hmm. huge, honest thing that we in the community can actually share because not every session is a winning session. So mm -hmm. awesome to Chiro. No, more. I think that's good. I, and you're right. I think Jeff, last um, last craps chat, we intended to talk about integrity. I think that was one of the topics that Jeff had um, that Jeff had kind of on tap for us. And um, um, we never really got to it. But I think Chiro is sort of highlighting that, right? That's you, when you have integrity. Exactly. It's like, yeah, you know, it makes it makes me exactly. trust what he says on his channel more when you come out like that. I think it's an important deal. We all got to do do that, right? I think that's we all should do that. You know, I, I've whatever you don't win every time, right? I've had lots of lots of sessions <laughs> where I have won zero or or loss. I, I'm on a streak right now. I, I've got like I'm like Waylon right now, like I think seven or eight times, maybe even nine now. I I've, I've been on a good trend, which is good, but I've been lucky. I mean, it's I'm not good because anything I'm doing. Like last night, the dice 
actually rolled for me. It was like literally six, nine, six, five, six, seven. Like it was the perfect roll for what I was trying to do. Normally that would have pissed me off because that would have been a bad roll, but I happened to be on the thing. I want to talk about this this week, actually, Joe. We're going to talk about rhythm because I was talking to a subscriber of mine about rhythm and he's like, you're an idiot. There's no such thing as rhythm. You know, I'm like, well, there is definitely rhythm. There's so many times where you're just off by one roll. Like, you know what I mean? Like you're on the don't and like the point comes and then the seven comes and like you're just off by it. What seems like when I go to the casinos recently, I'm hitting it. I'm on the rhythm. Sometimes here in the morning, I'm not. So it is what it is. I think it's, that's I one think of the things I want to cover the strategy here, John. When we go through mm -hmm. that, um, you know, some of the changes that might be made is, you know, adjusting for that rhythm. Um, even though we have the four phases set up, and we'll go through that in a little bit. Um, but you, the strategy that we're going to go through, you can actually adjust for that rhythm somewhat. So that's nice. Yeah. Well, we're going to get to here. I, I, they're still telling me that I've got all kind of echo. I have no idea where it's coming from. I have. Uh, I'm looking at the at the sound levels here, and um, I think we've got it licked because I don't have any echo in my ears anymore. I've got no windows open but you, okay. and you're coming through here, so there should be nothing. Yeah, nothing and I else have nothing on other than my phone. So, yeah, hopefully it's it's I don't know what's going on. Um, because I can see the levels here. So Ian, my friend, um, he went to Tulalip up here over the weekend. He went on I think Friday. Um, Ian plays a lot of four and ten, so that's cool. He he did really good out there. He got out. Dice were nice. You got on the good table up there. I think he was on. We have two. That casino's got a nice hard table and a really bouncy one. I sure. think he got on the hard table, so that was good. All right, let's go. Um, I want to see your strategy. Let's talk about the four phase strategy because I've I've done something similar in the past, right? I've done. I'm going to go to interview at the table here. I've done a strategy in the past where. Um, I've said play it in three phases, like to get them on, get them over, get them in kind of thing. And this looks like you've done a little bit more work um, than I did. <laughs> so walk me through sure, sure. the basics of, I'm going to put some money out here. I don't even know what I have in the rack. This is my rack from like 10 minutes ago. Let me put 500 in this rack and then I'll have you walk us through kind of what, what it is. I think you're doing 50 bucks, I guess, average risk per shooter or something like that. So let me get the rack yes. set. I want you to walk us all through it. Give us the high points, and um, there's 400. I was one chip off. That's not too bad. All right, there's 500 bucks. Tell us about the strategy and how you built it and what I should be doing here. Okay. Obviously, it's a hybrid strategy. Um, my goal was to originally put um, a total of $50 at risk at most at any time. That kind of turned into a $60 uh, risk, and we'll see that during the come out here. Uh, so for the come out, you'd set up with a fifty dollar don't pass bet. Okay, I'm going to spread them so everybody can see that there's two chips down there. That's fine. And then we would go sixty dollar lay four and sixty dollar lay ten. Okay. And the casino that I play at charges the vig up front. Um, if they charge it together, it'll only be a uh, three dollar vig. Um, you know, if you charge it all separately, you would be playing about four dollars two dollars each yeah yes yeah. so you're playing four bucks up front and i'll put them back here because i know we're gonna sure. get those back right your casino gives you back your vig if it's not used correct, correct? okay mine correct. does as well correct. yeah mine only takes one um, which is kind of nice <laughs> yeah you know so i mean this is a, what we're doing now is we're looking for that point um and mm -hmm. you know i don't know do you want me to go through the scenarios that are yeah, let, yeah let, let, let's work the whole thing so let's let's assume that our points five. We'll just we'll all right. We'll make make it a nine. We'll make the point a nine. Okay. If the nine rolls, then we take our way back down. Okay. So we'll bring these back to the rack. Right here, with our vigs yeah. coming back to us as well. So what we have right now at our risk. So again, on the come out phase, your risk is, your risk is 60 the bucks. the sixty bucks. Right. Well. Really, sixty you got, most or, or fifty for the don't pass. Sure. That's right. Your eleven will take this. A four takes that, or a ten takes this. So you've got fifty to sixty bucks at risk. But really, you've got only three ways to lose here and here, and two ways to lose up in here. So it's not awful. It's an, it's an eight out of thirty six ways to lose coming out. Okay, there's your come out. Our rack is basically clean. Here's the fifty bucks. Okay. Now what's up? Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, into phase two. And phase two is kind of two parts. There's an A and a B. Um, and that's one of the things that we might be changing in the future here. But to mm -hmm. set this up, we're going to go with the $18, 6 and 8. Okay. 
And then we'll go 15 in the field. Let me get set up here. So there's 18 on the 6 and the 8. That's going to be 14 change on this one here. All right. And then what? what's in the field? 15. 15 in the field. And then we're going to hop the five for four dollars. So that okay. would be two dollars on the um, one four and two dollars on the two three. Can you see those over here? I've got oh, you, might, you probably can't see them hops area. I'll put the I'll put the hop five up here on the back side. Um, That's you can't what, see what I've got. <laughs> OK, so this feels a little bit like like the like the EZ that the Hawaiians run. Because you got kind the hop of, and five yeah, yeah. and the six and eight. Tell me about the ratio here, because that's when I see an iron cross, I'm always preaching like three to one. You got them at one to sure. one. Tell me why. The goal here, John, is to try to pick up the five and nine cheap. So what okay. we're doing is we're just putting 15 bucks out there to hopefully win 15 so we can actually pick up that five and nine, which is the second part of uh, phase two, is to get that inside that 66 or yeah. Uh, the, the inside numbers there, you know, so. Okay. So um, walk me through. So if, 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 a, if a field rolls, what happens? Let's say a field if, number rolls and I get paid 15 rolls, bucks down here. Yeah. Then we'll take 15, put it on the five. We'll take 15, put it on the nine. Okay. So you basically so get one of those we'll paid for, right? Is that what you're thinking? Correct. Like one of these is kind of paid, which is nice. So you're yeah, still, that your, was, your risk out here then is going to be, besides the four you would lose, your risk is still the 66 or whatever that is, the 51, right? Yeah, yeah. You know, which is covered by the don't pass there. So, mm -hmm. you know, right now, as it sits, the don't pass is covering pretty much all the bets that are on the table. Um, right, because at this point, what you have at risk, the, this came from your initial field bet, but this is a win from the field. So you still have 18, 18, and 15, 51 bucks at risk, technically. Yes. This thing. So you're a dollar at risk. At the worst that case happens, you lose a buck at this point. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So the second part of phase two now is to collect $51. So that's the 51 you just talked about. Mm -hmm. um, so we're trying to get back to, to break even or I call it free play as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so that way, you know, our strategy really doesn't cost anything then at that okay. point. Okay. So what is the play? So, are, you, are you same betting in here for three rolls? I am same betting for three rolls, and all that again is one of the things we might change in the strategy mm -hmm. going forward. Uh, Chris DJ just rolled out the strategy. Check out his channel. He did it yesterday, and mm -hmm. he actually presses um, the numbers that are hit as they hit. Um, my original strategy actually beat his strategy, uh, not by much, but it did. <laughs> um, you know, but it could very easily go the other way if he would have had the rolls. If we both would have had the rolls, sure. um, his roll would have a ton of seven uh, big reds that came out that day. So. Yep. But if um, you get your three but, hits, you're, you're going to be at you're going to be at sixty three bucks. If you get three hits, you're at sixty three bucks. And if you correct. have the fifty one at risk, you're actually up by by twelve dollars here at this point. Is that correct? Correct. Now, the reason I use the term fifty one dollar prop is nope, what I'm I lost trying to get is. What's that? Oh, there it is. I lost your audio for a second there. Uh, the reason I talk about $51 rather than three hits is because sometimes you don't get that total three hits in before you get to the 51. Because if you, let's say you hit a double on the two or the 12 for the field mm -hmm. bet, you know, oh, that true. helps contribute towards that yep. $51. So that's why I have 51 in, in mind. Um, but it always comes out to be more than 51 by the time that third hit comes. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, so at this point, the, let's, let me rewind too. So we understand where we are hits wise, right? Cause it takes, it takes you one hit, obviously come out roll aside, right? Well, we'll assume the come out roll happens, but you have your one hit at least if everything goes well with a field hit or, a, or a whatever, right. To get to this point. And then it's going to be yes. three hits, three hits to even. Where you're yes. saying where you're calling it free play. Okay. So we get to here. Yes. What happens now? Now we get, let's say we get to this, this great point of being even. Right. We got our three hits okay. through some right, right, roll the dice. You've gotten to where you have this and you're in free play. Sure. Now what's your next phase? Okay. Originally, what I did is I took the don't pass down it. So we're in free play. Mm. So we really couldn't lose anything. 
Um, I have since changed that strategy. Um, mm -hmm. So we leave the bone pass up. And our goal right now is to get to 110 inside. And how we do that is that when we take a hit, we're going to press the number that's hit as well as the sister number. So let's say the nine or the, the five was hit right now. Um, okay. We would press up the five one unit and the nine one unit, we would rack whatever's left. So go to 20, take 10. Yeah. Right. You know, take one of the things I'm finding, John, is that, you know, your average roll is about eight rolls. So this is about where this strategy usually stalls. And mm -hmm. what we're trying is we're trying to set up for that monster roll for the longer roll on that. Um, yep. You know, so if it stalls right here, we don't lose anything. We got our money back. We start over. And the strategy is going to keep you around long enough for that bigger shooter to come around. You know, um, and if it's a real cold table, it's going to keep you're going to bleed a little bit, mm -hmm. uh, which is yeah. what Chris shows in the strategy when he sh when he rolls it out. Uh, but if it's like average table, you're going to stay pretty much about even until we start getting that six, seven, eight, nine roller and that's where you start making money with the strategy mm -hmm. you know so my goal was to try to collect as much as possible now because you know not many of them make past seven eight rolls <laughs> right so here we're, so here's where we are right you're at five rolls and your first and mm -hmm. your first press is in the books right so it takes you five rolls to get to your first actual collection right now you yes. mentioned this in here right so we can talk about this this piece so yeah pulling this down leaves these open, which is good. You pull this down and you're actually back to where you started with and everything else is, is gravy at that point, which is kind Correct. of nice. Or you could just place this, mm -hmm. right? That's an option too. You place that for 40, sure. Sure. right? If you placed it for 40 bucks, you're basically going to either win, you know, a net 10 on the, on the five okay. or on the, on when, if the seven rolls, right. But if the 40 bucks over here, right? It's not going to pay 56 bucks or whatever. Um, then you're looking at win six. So at least you're going to win six or win 10. I would yeah. place the point. If I were you, I'd place the point. I wouldn't pull it down. I place the point. You take that out of the mix though. That's one that you're not going to press, which means you're going to press, sure. I think all three of these equally as you go and just take that one out. Now, if the point is 10, fine, leave it, leave the don't. I would leave the don't. Actually, I'd probably lay on the don't. And, and just press in here forever. But if the point's one of these numbers here, why don't you place it? Place it for a, for some point where you're gonna be uh, up or down. Sure, sure. You know, like Chris, when he rolled out, he does not place the point at all. He would he would mm -hmm. hunt that point. So let's say the point has a nine, and instead of putting a place on the nine, he He's would put it on a 10. Sure. Yeah, you could do that. You could grab either, actually both of these, if you wanted to, right? Or just pull it. Just let the, sure. the three that you got work for you either way, like either let the don't pass ride or take it out of commission. One of the two, right? I think you let it go you let, or, you, or you don't. That's yeah. got to be the, the answer there. But I think sure. placing you it know, for so, like a third of it like that is weird. Yeah. So right now, like I said, we're in phase three. So our mm -hmm. goal here is to get the 110 inside is what the strategy shows. Once we get to the 110 inside, we're going to spread out 96 across. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, and that's where we start building. So once you get to 96 across, which is phase four, we're just going to start pressing. And if, you know, we're going to take what's given to us. Um, okay. The first hit is always going to be a $21 hit. So we're going to have to throw a dollar into it. Mm -hmm. And then and after that, either you're going to get $22 to, to put on, or we can spread across the 32 across and, you know, start spreading that way as well. Sure. So, you know, the whole goal is to try to get to that monster phase, um, which does happen. You know, it does happen not often, but often enough on the table. Um, and that's truly where the, the strategy starts making money in that. So what is your what is your favorite pressing strategy? Are you are you pressing the number? Are you pressing all? Are you pressing with everything you got? Like, what is your typical aggressiveness level there? My typical stretch. Uh, Pressing is half pressing, um, but you know, with this strategy here, what we're doing is to get to 110, we're pressing the number that's hit and the sister number. Mm -hmm. Okay, once you get yep. to 110, you spread the 96 across, and then we're going to be doing a 22 um, inside press or a 32 across, depending on what's given to us. We're going to try right. not to put any extra money into it at that point. So sure. it's either to be a 22 inside or a 32 across, whatever we have available. 
and then the rest is put into the rack. So we're going to slowly bring, you know, the profits right. up with the strategy. Cool. All right. Well, why don't we play it out? Let me, uh, let me clear the deck here. Let's clear the deck. I'll get my, uh, my, my bank set back up again. And then let me sure. roll it out. I'm going to switch camera views here in a second. Let me do this first. I'll switch camera views on us. <clears throat> and okay. then we'll, uh, we'll roll it out for a minute. Now, the way we roll this out, I'm going to put the strategy up on screen. So what I'm going to start with here is this. I'm going to go ahead and take the reds, the greens. We're going to go 50 and 50. I'm going to take a quarter. We're going to get nickels to go 60 and 60. I'll take my five whites and put our, our vig in the back there. Let me get my lay lammer up here. So there's the basic setup. Let me go switch views. I want everybody to see the, the rules as we go here. So give me a second. Let's go to this view here. Oh, that's not the one. I want that one. There we go. <clears throat> you can see the table now and the rules of the strategy. Yeah. So you won't see the dice land, everybody. I'm sorry about this. But to get zoomed in enough to see everything, um, that's the, the view that we're kind of stuck with. So I'll roll the dice. We're going to be off here on the come out. That's the nickel that I got changed with. And here we go. You ready, Joe? Walk me through it as we go. Yes. We'll put the puck off. I'm going to roll them. Just trust me when I yell the rolls out. This is what you're going to see. I have no reason to screw you. There's, a, there's a, actually a one, two, three. So money time, okay. right? Now, here's an interesting situation, right? You win on the come out. You've got your 51, okay? Let's to get a point established. But if they get a point established, you've won. Your, you've already, you're already even. You're starting out even. Correct. Does that change Correct. the way you're so going to do, do this? What I do on this strategy, if a, if a two or three is rolled, we're going to rack that win. We're going to mm -hmm. take the late back down. Okay. And then we're just going to try to roll out to get a point. So we'll wait till phase two until that point is set. Okay. So right now we pretty much are at three play already. Yeah, you you're essentially your bankroll's tight. Like your bankroll is exactly where you started. There's your 500 with $50 out here. So we're good. Yep. Don't need to lay bet because that bet's basically covered now. Like it kind of paid for itself Correct. with that lay bet. Right. Here we go. Coming Correct. back out. There's a 314, which couldn't work out any better for you. 314. So we're on that this point sweet. here. Okay. Now what? Yep. So now we're going to go $18 on a six and eight. 18, six and eight? Yes. Is that right? 18, six, and eight? Yes. I lost your audio again. Uh, and we'll go 15 in the field. Let me get, let me get your, uh, your your change back from that first. Hold on. 18, six, and eight. Okay. With four change right there. Okay. So then you're going to go 15 in the field. Yes. Gotcha. And then we're going to hop, hop the five for four dollars. Okay, your audio is a little bit, little bit uh, jumpy. Huh. But you're gonna, you're gonna do your same setup though, right? You're gonna do your, your same setup as there, yes. even though you're already at even. Yes. You're gonna still Correct. work the system, right? Okay. Now we're gonna Correct. look for hopefully if you, now you're like the goal here is like you don't care about these at all, really. You want a field hit, really. Correct. That would be ideal if you get a field hit and we pay for ourselves. Let's get dice are out, and there's a four two six. So we get a six. And so on a six, what happens is you lose your hops in the field. And we, so that's, you, and we just go back up. And we just go back yeah. up on both of them. Again. Yep, you lose 19, you win 21. And essentially, you're right back where you were. There's 15 back in the field. We'll take, actually, the, we'll get ourselves paid here with six whites. Mm -hmm. Put the hops right back. And actually, you get to buy a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> Well, maybe, <laughs> right? Two bucks is not a, maybe. and there is the three, one, four. So we end up getting whacked on the point. You lose this and this, but you get paid in the field. So the field win is going to happen. You're going to lose your 50 over here. What are we doing now? We're going to still grab five and nine. Yeah. Still grab the five and nine. Okay. Will these be on or off during the come out phase? They would be off. Okay. So like, you're just going to follow the and puck then, here. Are you going? You going back? 
Uh, if you're the shooter, you have to go back. Um, and I have a ladder system set up for that. So if okay. we lose it once, we go to sixty dollars. If we would lose okay. sixty, we'd go to hundred. And if we would okay. lose the one hundred, we would go to one fifty. So go up to sixty dollars. Yep. I'm and sixty on the. Don't. And up here, are these both still sixty? Yes. Okay, so they're not going to change much in terms of the overall. So now they're going to basically break you even with down here, essentially. We're going to pay Correct. our vags, obviously. Correct. Let me get our, let me get some nickels out of here for that. Okay, 60 and 60 and back to the rack. All right, so we're going to have, the lay bets are going to be going for 60. Now we're going to be a break even. Actually, you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose two bucks if a four or ten becomes the point. That's what's gonna happen here. Correct. All right, here we go. Let's come out. How about another ace deuce in the come out? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Uh, we got a four three seven. Okay. So what okay. happens on the seven? You're gonna lose your sixty down here, right? Yes. But these are both. We're gonna lose our vigs now because we we got paid. But you're gonna end up winning thirty and thirty. You're gonna win your sixty bucks Correct. back. You're right back to the dog. So yeah. So it's, it's effective. A push. Yeah. yeah. So we're going to get our bigs back with the buck change and try that again. I noticed that you don't do the, uh, you don't do the 11. I don't. Um, I find with my rolling, I really don't roll with that much. So it, it, mm -hmm. that's more of a bleed to, to, you know, to hop that 11. I'd agree. I don't. I don't typically do the eleven when I'm on the, the don't until I'm up into like the hundreds. If I'm like 120 down here, I may consider it. Um, but sure. yeah, this level no. All right. So my my point here, unfortunately, is going to be a four. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna, we're going to lose we're going to lose both of those. But you'll you'll take your ten and back. And that's the risk we have. That's why we have yeah. a bankroll. You know, start off with the net. Yeah. Well, it's gambling, right, Joe? I mean, that's. <laughs> I mean, at the end of the day, right? All right, so here we are. So we're already set up. We're already kind of in that first part of phase two now. We've got a don't yeah. on the four, which is what you want. That's actually a solid bet, right? And uh -huh. now it's going to build up in here. Now, if you're, if I'm talking to you and your name is Brian from Hawaii Crapshooters, what are you doing right now? I'll give you a little quiz. What is Brian doing right now? What is Brian doing right now? Yeah, He's do you watch enough of Brian's videos to know? Knock his, to knock his going pass off. <laughs> Well, well, Brian Brian says you can't beat me twice. So Brian says, "Okay, cool. You took my my lay. Brian's going to come sure. down here and put the whole 120 back on the line as odds." Cuz he doesn't think yeah, you can do it I twice, won't, right? That's an I, aggressive I won't move. do that cuz I I've seen too many people do it two or three times in a row, so <laughs> myself yeah. included. So yeah. I'm not going to get sniped on that one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead. Let's, let's uh, now we're going to build these guys up. We're going to try and get that money back and build those things up. So now we're looking for three hits at least, right, to get ourselves back to square. Yeah, we're looking for at least a fifty-one dollar profit, and we're going to get up to yep. Yeah, the fifty-one dollar profit right now. Cool. There's a ten, which does nothing for us. There is a four. Oh my God, Joe, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it came easy, it so a hard four wouldn't have helped you out. All right, so there's that. So we're, we're going to be back again. Same setup? Or are you going to go up now? Same setup. Well, we're going to go the $100 now. We're going to ladder up on the don't pass. Okay. Let's get $100 for those greens, 100 bucks on the don't. What's going to be up in here? And here, that's where I'm kind of uh, hemming and hawing about whether we're going to actually do the lays now or mm -hmm. whether we stay with the $60 or whether we go with 100 in each now. My big concern is the drain on the bankroll at this point. Um, yeah, hundred on each know, is it's is, what you have. If you're if you're hundred on each, you're all in. Then Vince correct. is going to be happy for you because you know, you're because you because Vince loves to put his whole rack on the table, right? <laughs> you know, and that's where my concern comes in. Um, you know, you John are doing your normal worst case scenario here. <laughs> yep. Um, you know, so you know this is where. You know, we can, it's open for interpretation, I guess, mm -hmm. you know, um, whether we just stick with this right now, because we have been knocked off sometimes, like Brian says, what's the chance of it happening again? I don't know. You know, right. um, so I that's mean, one of the, you flaws. can also consider, you can consider this too. Right. And I, and I think I was kind of alluding to this earlier on in this role, which is the minute you're, you're risk-free, 
right? Like mm-hmm. these numbers were already paid for. So essentially what happened is we lost, let's, let's lay it out. We lost 60 bucks on that four earlier, right? And we lost 50 bucks on the don't. If this money's back yeah. in our rack, like if you put this all back up in here, check out where we are. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'll put it here so we can pretend. There's one, two, 300, 400, and mm-hmm. 20, plus 66. So you're at 490-ish, yeah. right? Out in your rack yes. plus this 10 here. You're essentially even. I wouldn't have even gone back out to the don't pass. Unless I was the shooter, I wouldn't okay. have gone back out because I'm already, these are already paid for, right? As soon as you got, as soon as those are risk-free, don't, you don't need this bet. Unless you're playing for the seven, I would say you don't need to go back out here. I would have left these alone, not gotten okay. beat by the four, not gotten beat by it again down here, and essentially been out here for like $9. I think that's, if we, only because we took that hit earlier. We got that one, two, three that made it all free. I'd have let that be the way. I agree that's with just that. Me. I that's just me. That's just me. So I think once, yeah, once you're, because you fight hard to get to, to zero. To zero risk. Yeah. But once you're at zero risk, um, then you guys start making making harder decisions. But here we are. We're at this point now where you can put the hundred dollars back out and fight, or keep three hundred dollars in your rack plus let this fight. And that's your call now. Correct. Correct. So. So you make the call. Yeah, I'll so, do. I'll bet how you want. Keep it. Keep what you just said in mind. I mean, that makes some perfect sense. That makes a lot of sense. You know, hey, we already have that money in Iraq. We already, mm-hmm. you know, made some money. Um, you know, so if we're not the shooter, I, it does make sense to not do the don't pass at this point. Yeah, um, and even if I'm the shooter, I'm, 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 I'm going to go here. If I'm the shooter, I'm going to go like as light as I can. Once they're paid for, like, and now you're now you're chasing this loss down here. But to what end, right? Correct. I mean, if you're looking for the roll up here, stay with, I mean, pick a side, in other words, right? The hybrid works to get you here, but once you get here, I think you should stay there. That's just my opinion. I agree. I agree. All right, let's play her out. Let's, let's get us a point where no risk here, right? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Speak of the devil. There's a 6.5 yo. That would have taken your 100 bucks. <laughs> There's a 5.27, the which would have taken your next 100 bucks. <laughs> Thank oh my gosh. Me. And there's the one, two, three, which gives you the hundred bucks back. So you're ping ponging around. How funny. There it is. Hard six. So your point to six. You're sitting on the point, but you don't care. Now we can start playing. Correct. Let's try and get this to 110. And then let, and we'll try and also spread it out to 96. And let's try and make that money back. Maybe I can get some rolls for us here. Okay. Okay. There's a, I don't, it's a five, two, seven. So right away we're out of it. So as you know, this table will find every hole, every hole we find on this table. That's so that's why, okay, right? You're, that's you burned a couple hundred bucks everybody. getting here. <laughs> and that's why I'm asking everybody to roll this out, guys. I want to find mm-hmm. the holes so we can help correct them in that. You know, Waylon and Chris have both rolled it out, and both of them have had some really good suggestions, um, mm-hmm. things that I'm going to be putting into the strategy, uh, yeah. but I have not done so, so far. So. Hopefully in the future we'll see an improved version of this. Yeah, I think the big tweak for me is is honestly that it's it's definitely as soon as I'm free, right? I'm out of this on a subsequent bet. There's no need to stay down Correct. here once you're paid. I think that's the first thing. I wouldn't pull it during the roll. I would place it during the okay. roll to cancel it with a little okay. bit of profit. Um, but once I got this covered, I don't need the line bet anymore. Unless I have to be on the line, and if I did, it's the minimum minimum pass line. You know, sure. and let's, and let's, let's just play it out. Let's say you had, I'll put the numbers back out. Let's just say we're here just to kind of give a, an example of it. So let's say you're, you're, let's say you were where we just were and the puck is off and you're shooting. So your minimum line bet, let's say that it becomes an eight or something. Well, then the easy move okay. here is move that back there and make that look like a $25 odds. Or 20 bucks in odds okay. on the eight, which you can get even odds there. Sure. And now you've got your same inside, and this becomes your bet. Or if you want to match Not the amounts, idea. match the amounts, you can have 18, 15, and 10. So you're 25 total back there. And if you get a hit on, let's say, the six hits, and you're at 21 bucks, you're going to press the six by six dollars. You're going to press the five and nine each by five and take this and start stacking your odds up with it. 
and you can still have the Correct. same pressing action, just you're pressing the odds instead of the number. That way you're at least in the roll on the right side after you've gotten free and clear. So I think chasing the don't pass only makes sense if you're going to go dark. But if you're looking at this just to save these, it should never exceed what you have up here. I don't think. Sure. So that's just, you know, a couple two cents for you. Okay. Cool. Well, what time we got? We have time to roll it out again or not? I got 10 minutes. Let's do it one more time. Uh, 10 minutes. Let's reset the bankroll. Let's reset it. I'll do it one more time with you. Hopefully I get some better rolls this time. I'll actually change the dice out because uh, why not, right? Uh, there is a... Seems like everybody has rolled it all. Other than Waylon, who always wins. Um, <laughs> Waylon's got the touch. Out. He does, I don't know. He's got the touch. All right, here we go. 50 on the don't. We're going to go 50, 50. Let's get our nickels. 60, 60. $2 vig. $2 vig. I'll put them in clear view there and our buck back to the rack. Let me get a point here. These will be lays. They're on. All right, we're gonna be on a seven. Perfect. All right, so what happens? You're gonna lose your four bucks. Everything else cancels out. We need four bucks back. So I'll put 20, 20 and five. You actually get paid on sixty dollars, John. So you're making. Oh, that's where you're making six. ten. Yeah, you're making. You're making your ten. Ten. You're making ten and yeah, you're making ten and putting four back. Correct. All right. Sweet. Boom. Good. Good point. Well, not really for you. It's a hard ten. <laughs> Told you, man. I'll find every. I'll find every hole. So we're gonna lose here. So you're gonna start off down a little bit, and having to work. Okay. Let's get our insides all set up here. So this came from this. All right, let's get set it back up. We will do, I'll take the 100 bucks here. Um, we're going to go with 18 on the 6 and the 8. That'll be $14 back to you from that. We'll use those two for the 5 and 9. Or for the 5 hops, rather. Yes. 15 to the field, and the rest back to your rack. All right, we're set. This is coming back to your four lay. All right, so what you got in the rack here is 250, 275, 300, and like, like 325 in the rack, plus sure. 50, plus the 51 out here. All right? Yep. Here we go. Oh, I didn't put the caps on. Sorry. All right, here we are. Come in. Give me something good. That is pretty good, actually. One, two, three. That's what you wanted. You want to feel that's them. perfect. So yep, we'll lose our fives, the hops, but who cares? Because what you wanted was this guy. You wanted that to get paid down in there. And that gives us the Correct. five and the nine. Now we're set. Correct. Okay. We're still chasing this loss over here, but if we can get some of these in, in here to hit will be kind of okay. Yeah. Here we go. Let's go get them. Let's go get them up. Uh, 516. Okay, that's 21 bucks. And we're just we're just straight up collecting that, right? Uh, yes. The first $51 is a collect. Okay, I'm going to put that over here on this side of the rack so we can we can see what we're bringing back. And, and then we'll go ahead and, and rejigger re 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 things. Yeah, separate so I know where I'm yeah. at. Exactly. There's a hard four, which does nothing. Does nothing. There's another hard four, which again does nothing. Boy, I hate these wasted rolls. When I'm on the inside like this, this drives me nuts. Here we go. Oh my gosh, three in a row. Three hard fours in a row. Can you believe that? <laughs> I, wow. I told you Brian should not go odds on there. <laughs> wow. How it about happens. something different? Yeah, there's the midnight. There's the midnight. 6-6. Six, six. And this is where it sucks. I mean, you're it waiting does, yeah. sometimes. Sometimes it, yep. sometimes it hits right away. There's your 8, 5-3-8. Eight, eight. So again, $21. 
Yep. So we'll put that now here. you are. It looks like yep. 42 you've brought off the table so far. Yep. yep. And there's a nine, a six, three, nine. So Perfect. there's another 21. Okay. So right. when we, we so, got, we have the money back from that lay that we lost do. now. Yeah. Essentially, this um, this so, this covers your lay loss, and you're still not even though it covered the lay loss. So, you know, you're close. Yeah, you know. So I'm gonna get some greens here for you. Now, by the what way, would, what's that? I'm gonna get some greens in here. I want to get a, a better sense of where you are. Sure. Just so you can see, um, there's four greens because if we're gonna go back over here. There's 350. I want you to see your rack. There's 350 in the rack. Mm -hmm. There's 50 on the don't. That's 400 plus the 66. So it's 466. And you've got about 25 here. So you're just about even. Correct. Okay. Now what we would do is we would start uh, pressing so we can get to that 110 inside. Sounds good. I mean, I actually move this over so you can see. I didn't realize you couldn't see it. Now we're going to press. Come on, John, get some numbers here. Can we do it? Yeah, three, two, five. Love it. Perfect. Three to two, it's a five. That's 21 bucks. You're going to press the sisters. Is that right? Yeah. So we're going to take, uh, we're going to press the five and a nine. Um, one each, right? And I go just one unit, but here we make enough where we can almost go two units on both and bring that right up to a quarter. I'm, I'm down for that if you are. Go to a quarter? Sure. All right. Yes. It's a bet. Here we go. Dice are out. It's going to be a four, one, five. Good call. 35 bucks. Now what? Now that could bring us right up to the 110 inside, right? It, it definitely <laughs> I mean, so, will. Yeah. Yeah. So what we would do now is we would spread out the 96 across here. Okay. So 96 across with what we have out here. Yes. Beautiful. Okay. Three, this three. Is the beginning of our, this is the beginning of phase four then for the uh, fourth phase. Awesome. Okay, there's 96 across with a quarter coming back to your rack. Look at you. You got 400 here, 96 out here, 50 here, and a little bit of juice over there. So you're actually, I don't know where the dollar came from. Oh, I, that was from the, yeah. So you're, you're good. You got, you're, you're, at, you're in profit right now. If everything comes down, Correct. you're in profit. In your rack, you're actually, your rack shows you as being, hundred dollars down, right? Correct. Just a 25 bucks. You have, you'd have 400 bucks in your, in your actual rack, 550. So now we're going to go mm -hmm. hit, hit this long roll here, right? We're going to, just going to make some money. Yeah. Is that yeah. the plan? Right now we're in, we're going to be pressing 22 inside for the most part in the beginning okay. here. So roll it all once. A one, two, three. That does nothing for you, but let's, well, I got enough targets out there. I think I'd hit one of them, right? <laughs> there's an eight there's a six and a two it's an eight so you're Correct. right face 21 bucks face 21 we're gonna drop a dollar drop a dollar yep go 22 inside press our pressure cool all right there's a four three and a one okay, now that's, I, need, I need to get some white yeah i need to get some some more to this parent 27 25, 27. I'm playing it in reds because you're going to do something with it, right? Um, 22 again on the inside? inside again. Yeah, 22 right. inside right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to press whatever's given to us now. So if we have less than $32, we're doing 22 inside. If we have more than $32, we're going to do 32 across. So this okay. right now, we'll do 22 inside, and that should bring us to 110 inside it again. Will. Yep, goes to 110 inside. Perfect. And this is now where we start pressing up, but we're also collecting now them and, you know, starting right now. Yep. Yeah. At this point, you're right. No matter what happens here, you're going to bring something back to the rack every, on every single roll. Correct. Correct. Okay. And again, I want to point this out to you. You're on the 10 down here, right? So you got 15 against 50, right? Uh -huh. So if down here, if you move, if you were to take this 10 and I would drop a quarter and bring it to 40 bucks. Right, and let's, let's play this okay. out, maybe 35. If you drop a quarter and bring it to 40, like this, now 
on the seven, right? You're gonna you're 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 gonna only you're gonna win ten bucks off of this. This this becomes either a ten dollar win on the seven, you put or it becomes you can even put it at thirty dollars and and still come out ahead or twenty five yeah, exactly. for that matter and break even. Yeah. 25 is an even. This way, you're, this way, if you go to 40, you're going to win 10 on the seven, or you're going to win um, 30 on a 10. Either sure, way, right? Sure. But hedge this thing so that you're going to make money. <laughs> Essentially, the, the 10 you don't care about. Everything else you care about. Now you're looking for these numbers, and that just becomes Correct. is what it is, right? Instead of pulling Correct. this down, that's what that's one thing I would probably do. Or you could take 35 and go here. Not quite a full hedge on the on the hard way, but that's a way to grab that too. Sure. So, sure. All right, here we go. Let's get some. Let's make some cash. Here's a nine or an eight, rather five and a, or a four and a four. It's a square pair, hard eight. Okay. That's going to be thirty five so bucks. Thirty five, and that gives us enough to either press across, or mm -hmm. like you're saying, hey, we don't even need to worry about the ten now because that's covered. You know, so we can just do the four through nine press. You know. Yep. Give them all. One each, essentially. One each, and then, and then rack the rest. Yeah, rack ten. Perfect. Now you're at uh, you're at twenty, thirty, thirty six, and thirty. There's the nine. There's a nine. Six three nine. So that's going to pay uh, forty two bucks. Correct. I'll probably do Same it like thing. this. Yeah. So we'll do. Uh, let's do like this. 25, 42. And yeah, we'll do the same thing. We can go again, one unit each one. Like so, and rack 15 bucks. And this is truly sure. where the where the strategy starts making money. Everything is yep. kind of breaking even playing that 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 free rolls area until you get to this area. And this is where you start banking it and building it for that monster yep. roll. So you just gotta have a shooter that can make you some money, right? If you get past that you seven, eight roll, it. yeah, perfect. If you can do it, here's a hard six, three, three, and a hard six, right? That's going to pay 50 for one. So 50 for one. I'm going to rack that up, but you're still going to press with Correct. what you have left in your rack. I'll take your reds out and give each of these one. And so there's 50 bucks there. So this is going to go to... 30, these are going to be 54, it looks like, or 48, rather, 48, yeah. uh, 40, and 30 on the end there, and you've got, and then, your rack is getting no. close. Your rack is still, here's the thing, right? I don't want to point this out. Your rack still ain't right. You're still 75 hours down in your rack. We're having a kick-ass roll, and if mm -hmm. I seven out right now, you're going to basically win $10 and be down okay. for the no. roll. This is where the strategy plays into the rest of my videos now, John. Um, I talk about bankroll management and yep. hitting that, that profit go or, or the stop loss. You need to know where you're at on the table. So when you hit that profit goal, which, you know, if you have a $500 start, you're looking at $100, $150 profit goal. Mm -hmm. um, this is where you pull down to minimal now. Because uh, yeah. you have that money on the table, and like you said, there's a chance of losing it. You know, so you pull down now, and you can either start over or do a iron cross or do whatever mm -hmm. you want from there, uh, because you've met your profit goal by now. Right. Well, uh, one thing you can do, and here's like again, this is like my play from last night, and an, an idea is you're on the ten down here, right? You've got whatever you got out here. You've got a good hundred and fifty bucks or more sitting out here. If that all comes Correct. down, let's let's actually look at what we have. I'm going to try and add it up real quick for you. So you've got one, 125, and yeah. there's another about this 24. So let's call it, let's call it 50, right? 125, 175, 200, about 205 bucks out here plus the on the 10. You got about 250 on the table right now, and you got Correct. four and a quarter in your rack. You bring all that home. You're up by a couple hundred bucks, and you're playing the seven against the ten, which is the best bet you're gonna, you're going to get. So what you sure, could do, what sure. I did last night, I brought all this shit back to my rack, and let the seven just be the star of the show, and we roll for a seven. And yeah. even to, if you want to grab odds back here, great. That's what I would do. But again, it's your strategy. So you tell me how you want to play this out. No, I, 
I agree with that 100%. You know, and I talk about this in my videos about how, you know, once you hit that profit goal or the stop loss for that matter, um, mm -hmm. you need to pull the money off the table and yeah. and bet with what you have extra or whatever you yeah. feel comfortable with. Then. And you can well, start over. If it's a true monthly roll, it's going to keep going, you know? Yeah, let me call you up here and see what you have, and then we'll make a decision. All right, there's your initial, there's your 500 bucks, your initial bankroll's back. I feel solid about that. Here's going to be, um, and again, you wouldn't color up at the table, obviously. You're going to have to do it by yourself in the rack, but let's see what you exactly. got. That's where your, that's where your lammers come in to help you through it. But there is 75, 100. And here's 50. And here's 20. So you brought back to your rack. It looks to me like 172 with a five hundred dollars so starting bankroll. $172 off of a person that threw 10 to 12 times base. Exactly. And you still got that. You're still got a great bet. Sure. You know, this is the time where you say, I'm gonna let the seven be the star, go back on the 10 with that 40 bucks again and win six, you know, win 10 or 30 or whatever you want, but you're guaranteed to walk. You're guaranteed 172. Correct. So your call here. Now you, now you got to make your decision. You want to keep playing for the monster? You want to keep playing the rollout and go out with like whatever the minimum bet is. You know, you can go 64 across and be totally safe and start repressing, mm -hmm. you know? We're not 64. Maybe you let the, let the seven be the star still and just go over here, you know, and just go 54 across. Uh, I, if it was me, I would do a, like a 44 inch side, you know, because I already have the $50 out on DP. You know, and if that loses, I just pull my money off and walk. Them, sure. You know? That's perfect. All right. I'm going to leave this, the $100 in the back with your change over here. We'll go 44 inside. That's perfect. Sure. But, you know, the, it's vital that once you get your profit goal or that stop loss with the phase four strategy that you pull it off. You know, and then if you're way in profit, yeah. I mean, then go for the gusto. You know, don't worry about that <laughs> that money on the tail. You're you're going for that huge win. Um, but if you, you met your problem, well, it's time to get out and it's time to walk. So, yeah, well, this is a good time to go to be aggressive. I think you're right. You got one and a quarter locked up. At worst, you're going to bring back fifty more dollars, or you're going to yep. get some juice in here. Right? Let's let's play it out. Let's roll some more. Now we're super. Sure. Now I would go full press to the ceiling. <laughs> Right, sure. there's no there's no point in hiding now, right? Yeah. There's your there's your midnight six six, and there's your seven. So that's you knew it was coming at some point. Correct. So you're Correct. gonna lose your forty four that we put out there, but you're gonna get paid fifty dollars down here, and your profit for the day ends up being one hundred, two hundred and a quarter. Right, that ain't bad for a $500 starting bankroll. I'll take that all day long. And especially when I started out kind of ugly, right? The yeah. idea of your, of your hybrid or any hybrid is to grind, grind, grind until boom, you get the goodness, right? And you got the goodness there. We got, ended up making our money and you're out. So that worked out, that couldn't have worked out really um, any better. I think that, that, was, that was solid. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Good job, Joe. <laughs> I like the thought I process. Do it. You did all the work. <laughs> well, I did the rolling, but I mean, the strategy itself, though, is it's sound, right? It's got, you're safe on the come out. You're getting yourself safe. The only thing I, I really have a problem with, honestly, mm -hmm. is that it takes a little too much to get to even. It, you're looking at three rolls usually to get to where you're square. Yeah. Maybe four. It depends mm -hmm. on what comes out. So that's, it takes a little bit of time to get in there. So. It and that was one of the things I found uh, two Fridays ago. I used the strategy on the Friday night rollout with Jeff. And that is mm -hmm. one thing I did find is that it took a little too long to get to that, that free play area. Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, Waylon has rolled it out. And he has now put a video down on it, but he has responded with me. And he talked about, you know, he would go with a $1,000 bank roll. Um, and he wouldn't do the field bet. He would go straight to the inside bet. Um, restricted to 66 six, six inside. Um, Chris Dijen has rolled it out and he presses right away rather than collecting at $51. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's some pluses and minuses to doing it his way, my way. You know, if you're on a cold table, definitely the way I have it set up is the way you want to do it. 
But if you're yeah. on a warm, and this is what I'm talking about, the trends you're talking about before, if you're on a warm or hot table, by all means, start pressuring it away. You know, start yeah. building that up so you won't really have to have uh, three hits, and you can probably get out in two hits then. You well, know, also, so if, if you're rolling, faster, if, if you're the roller and you trust your shot, you might be the might be of the pressing type, right? Press, 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 sure. get out, and you, then you, when you when you come down to your your base again, you got profit and not even in the rack. But that's a good thing. If you're playing it against sure. me and I'm not, you know, you're you're playing the strategy and I'm rolling, then you're right. That would probably go same bet, same bet, same bet. Keep myself safe as sure. I can yeah. because I don't trust yeah. that person to get the roll. So that's maybe that's how you can look at it too. So maybe, yeah, yeah. Cool, man. That was fun. I'm glad we did this today. Thanks for rolling that out with me and uh, and, and sharing uh, your 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 thought to it with everybody else. Thank you. Good deal. We we start calling this segment Mondays with Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be on that next one if you want me to. <laughs> I'll let you know for sure. All right, man. Thank you very much. Okay. Thanks, John. Bye, Joe. Yep. All right, folks. Let's yeah, get bye. back to one. Yep. One more little thing here. Let's. Um, I want to roll through with you. Let's see. I'm going to go back on the screen here and talk to you about what's happened in the rest of the week. So, um, coffee and crap. So here's my schedule for the week, just so we know what's happening. Today we had Joe on sharing his four phase strategy. We rolled it out. It was kind of fun. I want to get into some psychology this week. I want to talk this week um, because I, I, you know, it's funny. I talk to a lot of folks in the in in the comments that, of course, I don't expect you all to see that, right? Because it's me and me and that one person talking, and not everybody reads all the comments. Um, but I think there's always interesting things to come up, like your risk intelligence, your risk, however you see risk, right? Are you an all-in guy? I was watching Vince play over the weekend, and Vince, when he's in a tournament at least, I'm not sure if he does this with his actual money, but in tournaments, he's like, your rack's got to be empty the whole time. It's all got to be out there working for you in a tournament. Um, when I play tournaments, I don't still, I have my same table mindset when I go to a tournament. tournament. Um, but are you an all-in guy? Are you a regression person? Are you a builder? Or do you just not care? Are you Waylon and you're just going to use your bankroll as your as your as your your way of getting through it? There's a mentality to that that I want to explore, and we'll ask some we'll ask some some probative questions tomorrow and see where you all stand. On Wednesday, we're going to stay with psychology and talk about the feels. And this is the question: How do you play smart in the moment? Like, in other words, are you trying to catch a trend? Are you pressing when you feel like you've got a good wave? Um, are you the kind of person that thinks they can pick what's happening? Like, you know, oh, I'm seeing a lot of fives, so I'm going to hop everything with a five in it. Are you that guy that's really thinking you're going to pick the table? How do you play smart in the moment? And that's, again, that's a brain thing. I can't change that, but that's a brain thing. And then Thursday, I want to talk about your math. How do you see the math? Do you ladder like Waylon does after a loss? Do you progress like I do after a win? Um, or are you just pure math and just going to write out the, the mathematical play and let the dice do what they're going to do and not try and outthink it. So there's lots of psychology to think through. And I want to hit this week a little bit of that. Um, no show on Friday. I'm going to be traveling down to see Zach and play uh, some craps down there in Oregon Friday. So I will not have a show Friday, unfortunately. Um, we'll get to when we're going to have the Friday night fight and all that kind of stuff later on. So I'll let you know as the week progresses what that's going to look like. Um, there it goes. And I'll leave you with this too. And I'll get to some questions here in a minute, but leave you with this. Um, I want you to think about building a strategy, since we're talking about strategy building kind of all week long. Build a strategy with your two favorite numbers. I've been rocking the six and eight recently for some reason. Um, you can build a right side strategy with two targets and look at all the ways you can play it. We can do a proper ladder, you can do a ladder parlay, you can do a tiered progression, you can double tap triple locks, you can regress and go, you can just start and press up. Um, how does your strategy, uh, how much do you put in the rack after roll one, two, three, four, or five? Depending if you're gonna be two hits and down, three hits and down, or let it go until the seven comes. So think about that in context of all these, all these, uh, these ways of kind of wiring your brain. Because I think everybody's wired so differently. There's no way to convince somebody who's going to be purely math or purely feel to ever think alike. So use your brain and how you're wired and think about how you might play your two favorite numbers in a strategy. And that's what I want to leave you with. Think about that throughout the week. It's how we're going to do this, okay? Um, let me get some questions here. Let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, Midmo Yo, I didn't get a chance to ask Joe this. Uh, I am not superstitious, even a little bit. Um, I just don't care. I say seven all the time. I could give a shit. Uh, to, me, to me, none of that matters. It just doesn't matter at all. I just, 
play. I don't, I, I'm not, I, I, same dice off the table. I don't care. I, honestly, if the dice go off the table, just give me the next dice so I can go. I really, I don't think that the, it matters. Um, I'm not superstitious. I know people that are insanely superstitious. Um, you've seen the guys like roll the dice against the back wall 30 times to get what they want. That ain't me. Um, Ah, Vince, it's not homework, buddy, not homework. Just think about it. Just think about what kind of brain you have. I know what kind of brain you have, for sure. Um, but think about what kind of brain you've got, and when you build strategies, how do you build them? How does your brain build a strategy? I think it's interesting. The psychology of this is, is to me, fascinating. That's why I love doing this show every day, so it's fun. Um, any other things for me to look at here PC-wise? Um, let's see. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, yeah, talking about trending. Um, seven field hits in a row on Friday night. Good gravy. Um, that's it happens. It happens. Um, Duracell says on the come out lane, the four and ten, six ways to lose, same as the seven, but you're risking more money to cover your don't pass. Right. Hedging can be brutal on the come out roll, right? So I get not wanting to lose that hundred. And I think, you know, as a don't pass player, you've got to be willing to just accept it. <laughs> you're gonna lose that come out. 20% of the time, you're gonna get beat on the come out between the seven and the 11. That's okay because you've got a 40% chance, you're, I'm sorry, you're a 60% favorite after that. You can get it back with odds. And I, I think, for me, I almost never hedge the come out on the don't pass. That's just a personal choice. I don't almost ever do it. I'm just gonna let it play as the way it plays, so. Um, all right, you got to 23 million by following table roots and trending numbers. Um, I, I, I watch you play events, you crack me up. I mean, like I said, when you're tournament playing or when you're crapsy playing or when you're doing like the, you know, the whatever, the online testing of stuff and you can go forever, um, your, your empty the rack deal is interesting. You caught the most insane roll. That seven fields in a row that you kept pressing, and you had, what you had, 3K in the field, I think at one point with all the pressing you did, you know, you catch it, you catch it. It was pretty fun to watch. All right, I gotta go. It's like 9.15. We've been an hour and 15 minutes today. Super long show. Um, I don't care. I love hanging out, but I gotta get to work. I have to, I'm getting paid to... I'm getting paid right now to talk to you, so I should probably get paid to do actual work. Um, so with that said all, um, let me get back to the, to the main chat. I'm gonna run and go to work. You all have a great Monday. Um, have a great rest of your week. Um, again, get your brains into the thinking, right, about what, what ways you would play a couple of numbers, and like I said before, um, how is your brain wired, and how does that change the way that you press? How does it change the way that you collect? How does it change when you leave, and how does it change the way that you construct the way you wanna do it? Again, not everybody's gonna think the same way, but if you can embrace the way your brain works, I think you can make some hay um, going through this stuff here. So anyway, we'll talk more about that all tomorrow. Um, Y'all have a great day, and I will see you in the morning. Bye, John out. <laughs>